Guys, I would like to talk about DevOps, doing infrastructure. What is it all about? It's quite a varied role, but essentially I wanted to focus on infrastructure as code. What does that mean? It means when you have some code that sets up a web server, hosts something, that sort of thing. Now, in the good old days, how would you do this? You would probably use something like some shell scripts to you know, install Apache and rsync some files into place. And that was all very well. It wasn't that good because it was kind of manual, but once you did it, it was, it was fine. The things that make, make that approach kind of bad nowadays is that you got SSL to worry about. So it's difficult to manage all the certificates and you've got just the nature of the internet. The fact that if you host a server, say in one country, Singapore, it's going to be slow in the US, it's going to be slow in the Europe. So what you need is a CDN, a contact delivery network, and you need something like CloudFront or something like this. So infrastructure as code 2020, that usually means using something like AWS Cloud to provision these resources, stuff to keep your files, the CDN. So this let me introduce to you a little project that I was working on in the last couple of days. I'm just trying to get the most minimal infrastructure as code. The code being uh, something called CloudFormation, which is can be marked up in JSON or or, um, or YAML. I've chosen YAML. I don't know why. I guess it's slightly more readable, I guess. And I'm just trying to come up with a minimal way of, of provisioning a bucket um, and provisioning a CloudFront. And it turned out to be actually super challenging because if you want a website endpoint that sort of serves foo, you know, slash index to HTML, you need a bucket with a website, a website uh, configuration. And, and a website configuration is pretty tricky to set up with CloudFront um, because it wants you to do like origin access identity, but that doesn't allow you to use the website bucket. So this is the kind of nightmare, this is the complexity that I'm having to deal with as, as a day job, really. This sort of nonsense. And unfortunately, the whole model for this stuff uh, by AWS, it, it, it's not very clear, you know, what is required, what isn't. This, there's some use, there's many different use cases so that like, that, you know, you, <laughs> you can't exclude some things because it might be needed something else, you know, like this, the, the linting tools and whatnot to, to write this thing are kind of bad in my opinion. I, there's this program called CFLint where you can check if it's okay. There's a thing called Rain, I think also, you can look it up yourself. And there's a, I, I regrettably use Visual Studio Code here because it's the only way, sorry, I can quickly get access to um, the documentation, you can, as you can see here. Um, it doesn't actually really do like, what do you call it, auto-completion very well. It's just a way of sort of browsing and, and, and looking up code and uh, and the lint basically tells you when, when you've gone wrong, you know. Don't get too excited about order completion. So um, yeah, that's that's DevOps. You might be thinking, oh, I can use something like um, Terraform, which makes everything so much easier than CloudFormation. But you know, essentially, the uh, Terraform AWS provider is is an abstraction. You know, it doesn't if you if if you need to set up a um, a website and a, and a cloud front thing, it doesn't make it Terraform doesn't make it any easier to switch to Azure or GCP. You know, it's just it's just basically allowing you to express the same thing in cloud formation as you do in uh, Terraform uh, with a, with another layer. So I think the value of Terraform it doesn't really help you as far as I can tell. It doesn't make um, writing a compact uh, infrastructure as code thing any easier. 
So, so hence, kind of stuck with the um, CloudFormation. But it gets worse. It gets a lot worse. Like for example, when you're iterating with CloudFormation, I, I have a, a handy, handy dandy make file going on here. When you when you deploy things as you typically do, it can take the iterations can take five minutes pretty easily, you know. And then you get these like weird like rollback error or something like that, and you probably have to delete your stack and do it again if you have like some and you know the the error messages that you get are so this issue where the domain name does not refer to a valid S3 bucket. Okay, so I've changed it to this website URL thing, which I just found off um, something on, yeah, something on GitHub search. But going back here, it's like the parameter origin domain name does not refer to a valid S3 bucket. So what is it? I, I don't know how to tell what that resolved to. Um, like, how do you see what it thinks it is? So I can then go and like, I don't know, debug it. How can I get better? I'm not actually sure. I mean, you know, when I think about Unix file system, chmod, whatever, the permission system, to be honest, I hate the permission system in Unix, but I'm just starting to think you know, I, I don't have the answers. All I know is that the the Unix file system is a lot simpler than working in YAML all day and having these horrible four to five minute sort of iterations, um, you know, smashing against CloudFormation um, events and all that stuff. It's very, the errors that you get back, like it doesn't tell you, like it says parameter invalid, like you don't, it's very difficult to even see what the parameter is. It's so frustrating. It is so frustrating. This this job. So, yeah, I don't recommend. I don't recommend this. But you, I guess this is what I get paid to do. I have experience of doing this day in day out for years, and you know, writing a cloud formation thing is not a big deal for me. It takes me time. I don't enjoy it, but people pay me to do this sort of thing. If you know better. Please comment below. Otherwise, I hope you now know a little bit more about CloudFormation and what an awful ecosystem it is. Bye, guys.